Welcome to r slash best of Redditor updates, where OP's fiance finds out that her mom was a prostitute who slept with his uncle. Our next Reddit post comes from r slash am I the butthole. Am I the butthole for breaking up my engagement because what my fiance said about my mom? I'm a 26 year old woman and my dad left my mom when I was only five years old. I also have a brother who's 21. My dad left the country with his mistress and never tried to contact us again. We're really poor. My mom had to do some immoral stuff to get food on the table. She was a stripper and also sometimes pleased men to get money for us. She put me and my brother through school. I understood why my mom did what she did, because we had no money and she wanted us to have a better life. I'm not ashamed because of it. I also started working part-time when I was 14. I was a good student, so I got a scholarship to a good university. My mom eventually stopped stripping when my brother got a part-time job too. She now only works as a waitress. I met my fiancé, Javi, who's 27, in college. He was my first serious relationship. We both loved each other. I never told Javi about my mom's past because my mom made me promise to never say that to anyone. I kept that promise, but it felt so wrong to keep this huge promise away from my fiancé. Javi only knew that my family was extremely poor, but he doesn't care about that. He's a very sweet guy who can always take care of me. He even covered some of the cost of my brother's education as well, even though I told him not to. My mom also likes Javi, which is why she told me not to tell Javi anything about her past or what she does for a living. So, a week ago, my mom and I went to Javi's house to meet his parents. I didn't realize that his uncle and aunt would also be there. Upon seeing Javi's uncle, my mom's face went white as if she saw a ghost. His uncle also kept staring at my mom as if he knows her. My mom felt uncomfortable and said that she wants to go home. Javi was confused by it, but nonetheless, we left earlier than anticipated. The next day, my fiancé came over to our place and shouted at me that I lied to him. He said that I'm a gold digger just like my mother, and my mother is the reason why his uncle's first marriage broke. I asked him to explain what the hell he was talking about. He said that his uncle knew my mom because he was a regular customer of hers and often hired her for her services. What? Doesn't that mean that he's responsible for the- Okay, no, I'm sorry. Back to the story, r slash. His wife caught him red-handed and immediately filed for divorce. My mom was crying and said that she didn't know that he was married. She never asked men about their marital status. I told Javi that he has no right to speak to my mom like that and his uncle was fully to blame because he was a married man who was hiring escorts for himself. My mom has no obligation towards his marriage. Javi still blamed me and my mom and said that he felt deceived. He said to my face that he doesn't want to date a whore's daughter because I'll probably invite men just like my mom. My mom had to beg him to not break the engagement. If I do end up marrying him, my mom will always have to suffer because of it. I don't want that, so I gave Javi back his engagement ring and told him to never show his face. My mom is angry because she thinks this is my only chance to get married because no other guy would marry into a family where the mom works as a sex worker. So am I the butthole? Then, 10 days later, OP posted an update. After I broke the engagement, I've been getting calls from my friends and Javi's family that I'm making a huge mistake. My close friends know that my mom used to be a sex worker, but mutual friends of mine and Javi don't know about it. They were all questioning me if I did that. Javi did eventually apologize. He said that he got carried away by his emotion and he still loves me. Not gonna lie, I love him too. I wanted to get past all of this. I know people told me that I shouldn't get married to this guy, but I had a moment of weakness. That was until Javi told me that he was willing to let things go and start over as long as my mom doesn't attend any wedding functions. I was shocked! Weddings are a big deal in our culture. There are many functions and parties surrounding the wedding. How can he ask that I don't involve my mom? Javi told me that because of my mom's past, it would be difficult for his family members to be around her. You know what? <laughs> he convinced his mom with difficulty about this engagement. Also, since his uncle's going to be there, it will only remind him of bad things. Yo, what? At that moment, I realized that I was never a consideration. It was always him and making his family happy. 
My family is beneath them because we're not from a respectable background and come from homes of sex workers. I stood firm and told him, no, this is not going to happen. I will not give in to their demands because the way I see it, my mom did nothing wrong. It's funny how quickly people will judge a woman based on her work that she had to do to feed her kids, but no one will come forward to help her in her time of need. Javi threatened that I was making a huge mistake by letting him go. I just left. I don't have the energy to deal with it. I think the news is spreading like wildfire now. I may have to move out of the city because if this news reaches my workplace, I know damn well people will ostracize me. So I might have to look for a job in a different area. Lastly, I messaged Javi by saying that I'm sorry for not telling him about my mom earlier, but I loved him a lot. I'm sad that he chose this reason to ruin a six-year-old relationship. I'll be going to the bank to pay back the money that he paid for my brother's education. I'm still crying and jilted to say the least. Also, I saw that my post was shared in different religious groups bashing my mom, saying that I deserved it. Well, let me tell all of you religious fanatics that most men who claim to be religious aren't at all. My mom had many clients who claimed to be religious, including pastors and preachers. So please, before blaming my mom, look inside your own house and your own family. You might find some chameleons hiding within your family too. Alright, here's the thing that confuses me. Help me, help me understand this because I'm lost. How are you going to disinvite the sex worker because she was a sex worker, but then invite the guy who literally paid money to cheat on his family? Because in my opinion, cheating on your family, cheating on your wife is a million times worse than being a sex worker. And honestly, it's kind of a shame that Javi and his family are so toxic here because OP sounds like a really loyal, honest, dependable person. She sticks by her family, she doesn't judge her mom for what her mom had to do, and she's even willing to pay back the money and give back the ring that Javi gave her. So she seems like a winner, she seems like a catch, but this guy's too much of a bigot to realize how much of a prize she is. Also, down in the comments, we have this story from Artichoke8951. When my mom was 11 and her sister was 8, their dad, so my grandpa, dated a madam. So one day, Grandpa picked them up and took them to the brothel and left them in the car so he could visit his girlfriend. As he was visiting his girlfriend, the John started propositioning my mom and aunt. The working girls threw a fit about it. It was such a commotion that the madam saw what was happening and banned everyone who made a pass at my mom and sister. Then the madam broke up with my grandpa and called grandma and told her what happened. Yes, the working girls cared more about my mom and aunt than their own father did. He was so mad about it and abandoned them again for a few years. Oh, jeez. I honestly can't tell what's worse. Propositioning an 11-year-old and 8-year-old girl or bringing your 11-year-old and 8-year-old girl to a brothel and leaving them unattended in a car. Gosh, I, I really don't know. Those are, those are both scum-level activities. Our next Reddit post comes from r slash drew off my chest. I am bisexual, and when this happened, I was still in the closet and didn't tell anyone about my ex or our relationship. My ex and my family were my whole world. I thought that I had a good relationship with my parents. I had inside jokes with my dad. I shared hobbies with my mom. I also had a good relationship with my 10-year-old sister at the time. I didn't drink, smoke, or stay out late most nights. I wasn't perfect, but I wasn't that troubled teenager of a boy who didn't even deserve to be effing heard. During the summer, my ex and I planned to sleep over at his parents' house. I know that it was a stupid decision to sleep at his parents' house when no one knew about our relationship, but I was 19, stupid, and hormonal. His parents heard us, and his father entered the room and beat my ex-boyfriend. When he tried to hit me, his wife grabbed him and I quickly grabbed my clothes and ran away and went to my home. In the evening of the next day, my father entered my room, grabbed my hair while my mother was crying, asking me if I had R-worded my little sister as well. I didn't understand what she was saying. I told her, of course I didn't R-word her, but my father said that I was just a mistake, dragged me out of the house, and told me that if I didn't run away from him now, like I ran away from my victim's house yesterday, he would turn himself into the cops because he'd be murdering me. All right, hold on. This is a little confusing. I'm trying to sort of piece together what happened here. I think that what must have happened was that OP's ex-boyfriend's 
parents told OP's parents that OP had been R-wording their son because, of course, my son can't be gay, so the only way that he would be doing this is if it was forced on him. Okay, I, I think that's I think that's what's going on here because otherwise it, this doesn't really make sense. I tried to call my ex-boyfriend to make sure he was okay, but he didn't answer. When I called my grandmother, she told me that I should be ashamed of myself and I should surrender myself to the police and that she would support me if I did this. I tried to ask her what was happening, but she said that she couldn't bear to hear my voice and hung up the phone. I went to the house of my closest friend, Angel. She wasn't home, but her father was. I wasn't planning on talking to him, but I just couldn't stand it and I cried in front of him. He listened to me and assured me that I had a place in his house and to not worry. The next day, my uncle sat me down and told me that he spoke to my father and he told him that I had R-worded my ex-boyfriend and forced him to do things that he didn't want to do. And had it not been for his parents discovering us, I would have continued the R-word. I was shocked and showed him the messages between me and my boyfriend. I don't remember what happened, but I was crying hysterically and Angel was holding me and my uncle was calling the ambulance. After I got out of the hospital, we spoke with a lawyer and reached an agreement with my ex-boyfriend that he would confess to my family that it was a lie. Otherwise, I would file a defamation case. We had all this evidence against my ex-boyfriend and he accepted, but it wasn't enough for my parents because they sent me a legal disownment letter. I'll spare you the details, but know that I'm fine now. Two days ago, my parents sent me a long message asking to talk, saying that my sister died. They wanted me at the funeral on Friday and to talk, and I told them to F off and to give me the funeral location. They told me that either I talk to them or they won't give me the time or the location. I want to see my little sister, but I don't want to see my parents. The thought of them only makes me sick. What did I do wrong to deserve this? Be gay? Man, this post is weird. I don't understand why his parents would rather believe that their son is an R-wordist than they would believe that their son is just gay. Are they that homophobic that they would prefer that as an option? Also, I don't believe for a heartbeat that the sister is dead. I mean, if she is, <laughs> I mean, if she is, then I'll be eating my words in the update, but it sounds, it sounds super fishy. I don't know why the parents would lie about it, but it's just too much of a weird coincidence for the sister to just randomly die. Then, about two weeks later, OP posted an update. Oh, hold up. I misunderstood this. This isn't like an ongoing thing. This happened five years ago. And now, five years later, the parents are reaching out saying the sister died. Okay, so, oh, okay, that changes things. Maybe the sister did die. Okay. So, to set the stage, OP was disowned five years ago, and now, five years later, OP wants to attend the funeral, but he's not sure what to do. Okay, I gotcha. First, OP shares some insight about why his boyfriend did what he did. When my ex-boyfriend confessed, he said that his parents wanted to kick him out and stop paying his college fees, so he told them that I had R-worded him. And he wanted to report me to the cops to shut his father up, but his father told him not to do that, so he thought that his parents just dropped it. He didn't expect his parents to talk to my parents. Anyways, on to the update. After I talked to my aunt and uncle, I decided to meet my parents. I didn't have much time until the day of the funeral, and I didn't want to miss it. I spoke to the same lawyer who handled my allegations, and I asked him to supervise my meeting with my parents. He tried to confirm my sister's death, but unfortunately, due to the lack of time, he couldn't. When I got to the law firm and saw my parents for the first time in years, they smiled at me and waved like nothing had happened. After they sat down, my lawyer started recording the meeting and introduced himself before mentioning my first and new last name. Since my father disowned me, I legally lost my last name? Wow, I'd never heard of anything like this anywhere. Do any listeners know which country this is? If so, let me know in the comments because I'm super curious. I've heard people use my new last name a lot in the past five years, but in that moment, it felt real. I don't know how to describe it, but the realization that I was actually disowned hit me. I think that my parents felt the same way because the joy on their faces disappeared after hearing my name. After the lawyer finished explaining everything, the meeting started and my parents spoke to me as if the past five years hadn't happened. I was disgusted when my mother tried to hold my hand, but I pulled away. My parents didn't say anything worth mentioning. After half an hour, my lawyer asked my parents to give me the funeral location. 
My father said that when family goes through difficult circumstances, they support each other. My friend Angel, who was also there, interrupted him and told him my new last name. My parents seemed devastated, but my mother continued and said, You know those feelings you felt when you heard the news of your sister's death? I'll feel them soon. I was confused and asked her, what does this have to do with the funeral location? My lawyer spoke up and asked my parents, did his sister die or not? My father tried to change the subject, but my lawyer repeated the question and my father said no. You were right, Reddit. It was a lie. My sister didn't die. The writing was on the effing wall, but I couldn't see it. After my father told me that my sister wasn't dead, my body felt very heavy and I couldn't breathe. I was told that I looked like a ghost. My lawyer tried to talk to me, but I didn't respond, so I decided to end the meeting. My father objected and started yelling at me. I tried to run, but I fell and started vomiting before I passed out on the floor. I feel like an idiot. I can't believe I fell for this lie. I kept telling myself that my parents wouldn't lie to me about this. We're not in a TV show or a movie. I kept telling myself that my uncle, who hates family drama, wouldn't get involved in something like this, and I can't believe they did this to my sister. For F's sake, I'm their son! When my dad told me that he was going to kill me, I never thought that he would do it, but now I'm not sure. I don't know who my parents are anymore. I don't even know why they lied. After the meeting, they sent me a message asking if I was okay? They didn't apologize or even give me an explanation whatsoever. I filed a restraining order against my parents and everyone involved, including my uncle and aunt. Some of my relatives contacted me and swore to me that they had nothing to do with what happened and they thought that my parents were going to talk to me about my grandmother's illness and her desire to see the family together again. Some of them even sent me medical reports proving her illness and that she wanted to see me, but I don't want to see her or any of my family members ever again. When my ex confessed about his lies, my grandma didn't believe my ex. She said that I forced my ex legally to lie about not being R-worded by me and I should stop lying and confess so that everyone can move on. What hurt me the most was that she wanted to fix me. She was sending me stories and links about places that fix people who R-word people. Man, usually best of Redditor stories are so nice because they give you an update that gives you closure or some kind of resolution. But this update just leaves me more confused than I was at the first story. Why on earth did the parents lie? Was it because they wanted to see OP, but they didn't think that he would meet him just if they asked nicely? Was it because they wanted to hurt his feelings and the way to do that was to say that his sister lied so maybe he'd feel bad and like guilty and grieving and that was just some way to get revenge against him, I guess? Why were they happy to see him? Yo, these parents are weird. In addition to being terrible parents, of course, who don't believe their son and who hate gay people and are just all around toxic individuals, they're also just weird. Anyways, OP, best of luck to you. I think you're right that the best course of action is to just cut all contact with your family because your family, with the exception of your uncle, is super toxic. That was our slash best of Redditor updates. And if you like this content, check out my podcast where I publish the exact same episodes. Also hit that subscribe button because I put out new Reddit videos every single day.